Hi, I'm Tina from Worcester, Ohio, and I'm a Revive Our Hearts monthly partner. One reason I support this ministry is it has blessed me over the years. I've received much encouragement. Enjoy today's episode of Revive Our Hearts, brought to you in part by the monthly partner teams. God bless. Do you ever feel like shutting people out? Relationships can be complicated, especially when you're hurting. But Colleen Chow says community is important. God has given us extraordinary people. Like, He's given us an amazing community. And each one brings a different, beautiful gift. This is the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy DeMoss Walgaman, author of Heaven Rules. For March 17th, 2023, I'm Dana Gresh. friend who is hurting deeply. Sometimes it can be really hard to know what to do, what to say. We've all been there. There may be some practical things we can do like bringing them a meal or running some errands for them or maybe just sitting and being with them. If you've ever been through much suffering yourself, you know what a blessing those kinds of things can be. And you probably also know what it's like to be hurt by the things that well-meaning people might say. This is all something that our guest today, Colleen Chow, has had a lot of experience with. Yesterday, she talked about how God is teaching her to have joy even as she battles terminal cancer. If you missed that program, you want to go back and listen to it at reviveourhearts.com or on the Revive Our Hearts app. Today, Colleen and Dana are going to talk about the importance and the challenges of engaging with others in their suffering and in our own suffering. Before we listen to their conversation, I want to let you know about a beautiful book that Colleen has written during her time of suffering with cancer, knowing that she is terminal. It includes 31 devotional readings on suffering, and it's called In the Hands of a Fiercely Tender God. I love that. If you've ever asked questions like, how do I suffer long and well? Or what about when I feel maybe God is holding back on me, the the life I long for and deserve, He's not giving me? Or how do I face overwhelming, pressing darkness? If you've wondered any of those things, or you have friends who have, you're going to want to get this book. Colleen will challenge you and those you love to love and trust Jesus better as you walk together through suffering. When you give a gift to revive our hearts today, we want to say thank you by sending you a copy of Colleen's book. I'm so thankful for all that friends like you are doing to help us reach more women around the world with the message of God's grace for hurting people. You can make a donation when you go to reviveourhearts.com, or you can call us at 1-800-569-5959. Again, that number is 1-800-569-5959. When you give, be sure and ask us to send you a copy of Colleen's book. And thank you so much for your prayers and your support for Revive Our Hearts. Now, here's Colleen talking with Dana Gresh. Colleen, I just came into the studio from my office where I have a friend, a co-worker who's grieving because her, her stepfather— passed away fairly suddenly over the weekend. <sighs> and this morning, what she needed to process through was all the unkind and awkward things that people said to her mother all weekend long. Yeah. We sure do hurt each other sometimes. We do. <laughs> we do. So how do we approach someone's suffering in a way that's not only kind and helpful, but Mm -hmm. also biblical, guided Mm -hmm. by the Word. Because, you know, we can't go wrong when we go to the Scriptures for how we approach something. Will you help us with that today? Oh, I'd love to try. (laughs) I feel limited in this because I have messed up a lot in this area. I have not cared for people the way that I wished I could. You know, when I look back, I think, oh, man, I I got that so wrong back then. And Mm -hmm. so I have a tenderness in this journey of ours with people who don't get it right, you know, because I have also messed up so much in this area. But one thing, it's funny, I, I was just 
texting with my friend who had who also has stage four cancer this morning, and we were we're texting about this very thing, <laughs> just <laughs> because there are so many really hurtful things that of course are well intentioned, right? We can assume that that right. person is really wanting to love us and come alongside, but they lack the skills or the experience maybe they haven't gone through maybe enough life yet to be tender to the suffering days. But I think one thing that really stands out to me through this this long journey now, because there were a lot of comments in singleness, a lot of comments mm-hmm. in chronic illness, a lot of comments, you know, in financial stress. That, you know, it, no matter where you're at and what you're facing, people can just say crazy things, right? All of us are guilty yeah. of that. So, but the thing that I keep coming back to is having a sensitivity to the spirit, to his leading, and to making an effort to synchronize with where someone's at, because we're all so yeah. different. Some people want the questions. Some people don't want the questions. <laughs> On one day, they might want one thing. The next day, they want something else. I, I, like None of us is God. None of us is going to do this perfectly like God can. But when we lean into praying, God, please give me wisdom for how to care for this particular friend on this particular day. He is so faithful to that. And here's a tricky thing. It's hard to say without, I'll let you kind of mush through this with me. (laughs) You can give some direction. (laughs) Let's mush. Let's mush. I think we're quick to send a verse because we don't know what to do. Mm. And that can come across like Job's friends. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing to do before we share scripture, which this sounds weird to say, but we sit with someone mm. in their ashes and their boils where you know Job was sitting there in excruciating suffering and loss. And his friends said some right things. They had some great truths wrong timing. Yeah. And so until we can sit in the grief and mix our tears with our friends' tears and figure out where they're at, I am very slow to share a verse. But then eventually there's a beautiful time to do so. But it's after we've been with them in the grief and figured out where they're at. Yeah. And I think the verses can they've really been hurtful over time because it's not spirit led. It's just this verse thrown out. And scripture is powerful and it changes our hearts and I love it with all it's my life. Yeah. But there's a sensitivity to the spirit that we need when we do yeah. that. You just confirmed something that I was feeling insecure about. One of my best friends and prayer warriors just had a double knee replacement. Oh why they did them both at the same time, I really don't know. But I think she was afraid she'd chicken out if she had to do it a second time. <laughs> but she is in excruciating pain. It's only It's been about a week today. And I would say three days ago, I've been checking in with her by text because it's just not appropriate for me to visit yet. All right, yeah. Even though she's one of my dearest friends, she just mm. she wants her nurse and her husband. That's what she wants yep. right now. Yep. And I started to like text out a scripture verse and Mm. suddenly felt this no, no, no in my heart. (laughs) And I thought, well, that's really funny because we text back verses back and forth all day. And I just felt like I was supposed to tell her how much it stunk that she was in so much pain. Oh, I love that. And I just said, I'm so sorry you were hurting so bad. Mm. I wish I I could take it away. Push send. (laughs) But it felt so insufficient when I did it. You know, (laughs) but it was enough for that moment. Just hearing you say those words, I make those unlock my heart sometimes. Yeah. When somebody just says that, it's like it gives me permission to just weep and feel all the feelings. And then I know that they're going to lead me to God, right? They're not going to just leave me stranded there, but just their validation of this is really hard. Mm hmm. And I love how you said it. I wish I could take it away. Like, oh, Mm. that's just such a beautiful way to care for a friend. Yeah. I wish I could take your cancer away. I hate that you have it. You're amazing. Because you're such a bright light in this world. 
What kinds of things have been helpful for you Mm. as people have ministered to you? What can we learn that's useful? Mm -hmm. Well, just what you did, as you explained the dynamic of, you know, your friend just wanting her husband a nurse right now. It's been amazing to see friends who have been so in tune and so sensitive to not overwhelming us and to just being there and being, you know, they're ready to come over for, you know, sit on the couch with me and chat when I'm ready, but they're also not pushy for that and they're not demanding. What I found over time is the friends who have really high expectations during the the hardest days don't tend to be long-term friends because I'm going to disappoint them a lot because I'm I can only handle so much. My capacity is maxed out a lot, you know? Yeah. And so if they want a lot of time and they want to be my, you know, closest friend and do all these things for me, and they, then that'll be overwhelming. But th- we've had so many people really get it and just be so precious about dropping something at the doorstep like dropping a bag of groceries or flowers or a gift card for groceries or a number of things. Like over the holidays, people just sent money for whatever, and they didn't save for Mm -hmm. medical, although that's a crazy budget item for us. (laughs) But it's just no strings attached kind of love where it's like no pressure, no expectations. Here's what I want to do without any obligation to return the message or return, you know? And that, I think when someone Mm -hmm. is in the thick of it, it's so much to try to even keep up with communication that we've we've just had so many people get it right and do it beautifully. It's amazing. Love it. You know, you're describing something that I think is so beautiful in the body of Christ and humanity, our desire to help and several years ago when I was battling through how to minister to someone who had a, a physical ailment, mm-hmm. I came across 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 7, and 9. I want to read this. I've shared this with mm-hmm. you before, but I think it's just precious. Mm-hmm. It says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good mm-hmm. to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit. Gifts, there is plural, gifts of healing. Yes. And I think it is an interrelational gift Mm. or interrelationship of gifts. When we minister to someone in healing, there is the act of faith and praying for healing that the Lord would bring it if He wills. I continue to pray that for you. Um, There's mercy, what we were just talking about, you know, weeping and just sitting with someone and saying, it really stinks that you hurt so badly. Yep. It's mercy. Yep. And you were just describing helps, people putting groceries yes. on your doorstep, um, bringing over a big pot of chicken noodle soup or coming <laughs> and cleaning the house, you know, yes. for someone that just can't get around. Yes. Oh, I just felt the conviction of the Spirit. My friend with no knees oh, is going to need I that. I love that. <laughs> so oh, practical. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need some girlfriends to help me, though, because awesome. I don't do that by myself. But... I think we mistake healing as just a miraculous thing that happens. Sometimes the Mm. gifts of healing require us to walk people through Mm. the suffering with the help and support of the body of Christ. That's a beauty and a miracle too. Yes. And I love how you you mentioned the gifts, plural. I just love that. And I, I should add to what I've said, when I know someone loves us, it's really hard for them to go wrong because we need Mm. each person in our lives. God has given us extraordinary people. Like He's given us an amazing community and each one brings a different, different, beautiful gift. So I love that you highlight that because it is, it's so true. So maybe there's somebody that really likes cleaning. Yes. That could clean for my friend. Yes. And I just (laughs) need to prompt them. (laughs) I'll be the finder of the cleaner. <laughs> Sounds wise. <laughs> well, you know, at the same time, I guess when I talk about gifts of healing, mm. I feel like I'm on a tightrope when I mm. I talk about that because I want to remain faithful to pray in faith that mm. there can be healing. Yeah. So 
as you've wrestled through suffering in your own battle with cancer, mm. are you still praying that the Lord might heal you? Or is there a point where that stops? Or where do you go in the scriptures to answer mm. that question? Well, it's funny. Ezekiel 16 comes to my mind, which is so interesting, but it's the parable of God's adulterous wife, Israel. Mm. And the description here, since I was in my early 20s, I have loved this chapter. The first part, or I should say several verses in, talks about how God healed, rescued His people, His wife. And it says, I passed by you and saw you thrashing around in your blood. And I said to you, as you lay in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you, as you lay in your blood, live. I made you thrive like plants of the field. You grew up and matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, but you were stark naked. Then I passed by you and saw you, and you were indeed at the age for love. So I spread the edge of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I pledged myself to you, and then you became mine. I'm going to sum up, but it, it talks about he washed me with water, rinsed off the blood, anointed me with oil. And I'm, I'm using this for me because this is a picture of salvation. Clothed you in embroidered cloth, provided you with fine leather sandals, wrapped you in fine linen, covered you with silk, adorned you with jewelry. You were beautiful, um, beautiful crown on your head. It goes on and on. And at the end, it says, it was perfect through my splendor. Your, your beauty was perfect through my splendor, says the Lord. And this idea that God has rescued me from this horrendous death sentence, and I was like a baby thrown out in my afterbirth and blood, and He walked by and saw me and said, live. And so I have been healed in the ultimate sense. I've been rescued from that death sentence of sin. And so mm. that was a long, <laughs> long answer to give context for with this diagnosis, the second and terminal diagnosis, I have not felt freedom to ask for a miracle. And I'm mm. so grateful that others have. So it's this strange, I've just had a restraint from the Spirit to not pray for a miracle, but to pray for more time. And Which in itself is a bit of a miracle. And that's what I've told people. I love you said that. <laughs> yes, it is a miracle already that I am here a year yeah. and a half, more than a year and a half after that terminal diagnosis. So, have you outlived yeah. what they originally said you might have? Well, the first thing that the first doctor told me, no, that I had a little few years, but that quickly changed with how mm. fast the cancer was overtaking it was faster than anyone thought. And then for about a year, I was living in terms of months in my head. Like, I don't know if I'm going to see a few months from now. At this point, who knows anymore? <laughs> because God is so using... it is a miracle that I'm is. looking at you. It really it is, is. a gift from the Lord. It's such a gift. But what you talked about a moment ago, that passage from Ezekiel chapter 16 mm. and experiencing that spiritual rescue, that spiritual yes. miracle, that spiritual healing that overcomes death. Yep. We don't overcome physical death, but there is yep. an eternalness to our souls yes. because He has come and rescued us. Yes. How do you possibly walk through the mm. suffering mm. that you are walking through right now mm. without that hope? I have no idea, Dana. I have thought of this so many times. I don't know how people face this without the nearness and goodness of Jesus and His words that transform the worst days into beauty, I don't know how, I don't know. It mm. boggles my mind when I, I think about that. Well, let's think about this. Mm. There's probably someone listening mm. who that is their story. Yes, They're walking through cancer, estrangement from a spouse, financial disaster, chronic pain, mm. something yep. without Jesus. Yep. And when you just talked about Ezekiel, it almost sounded like a different language to them. They didn't know what you were saying. Yep. I wonder yep. if you could just speak mm. to that woman, that mm. man right now. What would you tell them is the most important thing they can do today? Mm. 
I love that Jesus is standing waiting for them. He's just open arms. He loves you so much that He came, forced His perfect godness (laughs) into flesh and bone so that He could take your finiteness, your frailty, your sin, that guilty conscience that plagues us apart from Jesus, He took it in His body. So when we feel pain, when we have cancer, when, when our hearts fail emotionally, when our, any frailty about us, anything that we've done wrong, anything that we have, the way we, ways we've hurt people and messed up our lives, He took all of that on His body and took it to the cross and shed His blood and suffered greatly, 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 beyond what we can imagine because He took all of our sin and shame and awfulness on His body at the same time. And He became that sacrifice to pay. Sin requires death. It requires, that's the penalty of sin is death. And He took that death on Himself and then rose from the grave so that we could have life. And so, wherever you are at right now and you're suffering, maybe you've just messed up your life big time. He is just so eager to love on you and to take that burden off of you that you would have to bear suffering by yourself and sin by yourself. And He's got everything, everything Mm -hmm. that we need and want in Himself. And the Bible says that if you profess with your mouth that Mm. Jesus is Lord, that's it. That's where you start. Yes. You just say, oh, there's something in my heart right now that's making, this is all making sense. Yes. And you might say, but I don't understand that Ezekiel guy, or I I didn't get the word Mm. you used a few minutes ago, whatever. Yeah. Don't start there. Start with this. There's a sense in your heart that you can't walk through this suffering without him. I love that. And so you just profess with your mouth that Jesus is going to be in charge of this, that he's going to yes. be the Lord of your life, of this suffering, of your story. Yes. Yes. In fact, I wonder, mm. Colleen, would you just pray mm. over the one whose heart is thumping out of their chest right now and thinking, oh, yes. yeah, that's me. Jesus, I, I have people on my heart right now that connect me to the one listening that I have prayed for for so long that they would have the gift of faith to believe you, that you are their salvation, you are their Savior, you're the one who rescues us from our sins. So I pray that right now this dear one would believe that you would give light in the darkness, that you would give them the light of the knowledge of you, and that you would allow them to open their hearts and their minds to the reality of you, and that they would trust you, that they would experience your love right now. God, reveal your love for them, and let your truth that you show in your word in the Bible that that truth would grab them, compel them. They'd believe it, that you have taken care of this inordinate burden of sin that we cannot bear on our own and that will lead to forever death. But you have forever life. Let them believe that. Let them experience you right now. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's my friend, Colleen Chow. Colleen explained why she can have such peace and hope even as she's facing death. Do you have that same hope? Have you found the one who can give you the forever life that Colleen referred to in her prayer? If you aren't sure or you want to learn more, go to the transcript of today's program at reviveourhearts.com. 
And we have a link there that will explain more about what it means to put your trust in Christ. We've heard how Colleen hasn't given up on living, even as she faces the end of life here on earth. Her physical activities look way different than they did when she was healthy, but she's continuing to serve others through her writing and her zeal for Christ. One way Colleen decided to serve was by becoming a Revive partner. This ministry has had such an impact in her life that she wants to help others hear the same messages that have blessed her and her family. In fact, how about we let Colleen tell us what Revive Our Hearts has meant to her. Revive Our Hearts has been such a blessing to me personally. I have a short list of resources I go to for encouragement. I'm probably a little picky, (laughs) but Revive Our Hearts is one of them, and it's such a neat thing to have a just a myriad of resources through this ministry, blogs and videos and articles and conferences. And it's been such a sweet gift to me personally, and then one that I've passed along to others. And I remember I probably was in my early 20s, maybe late teens, when my mom gave me a book by Nancy, and it was the first introduction. I think it was on having a quiet time. I can't remember the title of the book now, but ever since then, in different seasons of life, it's just amazing the longevity and the faithful and beautiful ministry that continues to care for me and for my circle, my people, and then I know that it will care for you. And the fact that each of us walks through hard things, each of us walks through suffering, and to know that there's a herd of women (laughs) that surround us and that walk with us and that testify to God's faithfulness. And these stories are a gift, and I'm so blessed that ROH passes this along to all of us and that we get to all be part of this together. And we're so blessed to have Colleen as a Revive partner. You can hear more from her coming up on our weekend program, Revive Our Hearts Weekend. It's heard on many of our same stations, or you can check out the podcast too. If Revive Our Hearts has ministered to you, would you consider becoming a Revive partner? All that means is that you commit to pray for us, spread the word about Revive Our Hearts, and support us with at least $30 a month. We're so grateful for your willingness to partner with us in reaching women with the freedom fullness and fruitfulness of Christ. When you sign up today to become a Revive Partner, well, we'll send you a bundle of goodies. It includes Nancy's Heaven Rules book and calendar, several booklets, scripture memory cards, and a Bible study on Esther. And that's just our welcome to you because we'll keep sending you resources. So would you ask God if he would want you to become a Revive Partner? If you'd like to sign up, visit reviveourhearts.com or call us at 1-800-569-5959. That's 1-800-569-5959. We can't wait to hear from you. Next week, Nancy will start a series on the life of Enoch, Noah's great-grandfather. She'll explain how Enoch shows us how to have a close relationship with God, even in the midst of an evil world. Please be back for Revive Our Hearts. Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth wants to show you how suffering can bring greater freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.